Well, hello there, my dear friends, and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project and part two of my How to Butcher a Beef Forequarter. Now, if you have not seen part one, where I took the forequarter and we broke it down into these primals, please check the link. It's in the description. It'll also be up here at the end in one of the end tiles. In that video, I showed you how we got all these relevant parts. Now, in this one, I'm going to show you how we take it that step further and prepare these primals as we do in a butcher shop. So, without further ado, let's do it. Right then, let's start working on all these primals. First thing I'm going to work on, very simple, is the clod. So I'm going to hang all the other parts back in the fridge, keep it on chill, and let's get doing this. So this clod then we are going to be using for diced beef and minced beef or ground beef, whatever you want to call it. Just a case of taking out this bone, nice sharp knife, close to the bone. And then just, as you can see, very simply taking out the bone. Now with this four quarter, the way I'm cutting it up, very traditional. But as we go through it, I will explain all of the different cuts we can get from these pieces. Because as time moves on and trends change, I mean, the short ribs are a perfect example. Years ago, like I said, just boned out. Now, the super trendy short rib. So. Cut through there. And then release that bone. Now all the bones, they will not go to waste into stock. I'll just trim off any bits of meat very quickly that over there and then we're left with quite a big chunk of meat so just separating out the seams taking off anything that won't go through the mincer anything that's not good to eat just trimming it up very quickly so if you want to take a few bits off but this is going into my ground or mince pile just like that and it's just a case of getting in there, really. And people say to me, well, how do you know what to, to grind and how do you know what to dice? Well, simple. It's all about having a look at the piece. You can see that's a decent sized piece of meat. So easily just trim it up. You know, you could take these pieces off and as you go along, just dice them up. I don't mind leaving a bit of fat on. I think if you're making a stew, you're making a casserole, it's all flavor. So just gently eyeballing it. And the pile starts to grow. And what we will do at the end, we will go over our trim pile again but I'm just trying to get this done so you can see what happens. So that is our clod done. A beautiful bone for stock or cut the middle out, give it to your dog, the ends for stock. So as you can see also, starting to build up that grind, that mince pile, and our diced 
beef pile. You can always dice these into cubes. I've just showed you what you can do with it though there, but they will go straight into my dice pile. There's the clod. So on to this Jacob's Ladder, or as a lot of people know it, short ribs. Traditionally, we would cut between, from this end, the third and the fourth rib. And then we would just seam out all these muscles. You get some really, really great dice out of this. But I imagine some of these could be cooked as steaks. Always taking off that skin. Always straightening it up. Great little muscle there. I mean, for now, I'm just going to dice through it. And if you see what I'm doing, I'm taking all these pieces and just working on them one at a time, like taking this out of here now, trimming it up, imperative to have a sharp knife. Else it's a ball ache, a serious, serious ball ache. Again, for the trim, how many times can I say trim and diced? Let's see. Anyway, taking that fat, you could render some of this fat down for dripping. Very, very little waste on this. Very little waste. Just exposing the meat. And as you can see there, just peeling it back. Then we stand these up. And then just with our knife, go down the ribs, taking off what's left. And then through these, tidying them up. More great bones for stock. Or your pet dog, your trusty woofer. And they're gonna have one of these each. They're outside the door now. They're thinking, what is he doing in there, man? It smells amazing. So another beautiful hunk of meat there. This would be great for pies. Beautiful meat as you can see. A great steak and kidney pie. Look at that. Beautiful. Just dicing it a little bit smaller for a pie. Okay then, so many ways to cut this, so many things you can do. Pretty much that end one hasn't got a lot of meat on, but you could just cut that in half. That'll give you a nice short rib. Just squaring these off. Because what you've got to realize as you move along this set of ribs, there's different muscles, different thicknesses as you can see there, but you could just about get away with those as short ribs. Okay then, so many things we can do with this now. We can continue to go through the ribs singly. That'll give you, as you can see, beautiful short ribs if we were to cut those in half. And I know in the US they go across the ribs, just small, and then you're left with tiny little rib bones, but it's in a long line and you've got all the meat on them. 
which I quite like that idea. But what I'm going to do, I think, keep it traditional, is just go through and cut these in half. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to seam this muscle out. It's a decent sized piece of meat, just like that. And then I could continue down the ribs, just like that. We'll cut those in half. And that's our short ribs. This here, just trimming it up, squaring it off. A lovely piece of meat. You know, I'd be tempted to roast that as it was really slow. But what I'm going to do in this video, I'm just going to take off the fat. And that gives us again some prime diced beef. Again, this fat can be minced and rendered down for dripping. Just take that off into our mince. And then we'll just again skim in any fat off. This would make great kebabs. Just look at that. I'm going to leave that hole. So we've got our short ribs in half, our short ribs whole. Absolutely fantastic braise slowly. We've got that great hunk of meat out of there. Pies, stews, casseroles, our diced beef, and again, our trim for mincing or grinding. And then I just want to show you this. This is one of these long ribs which I've boned halfway down folded over that makes a fantastic beef lollipop would look absolutely brilliant stood up on a plate on some mashed potato just another way to prepare these you know people eat and buy with their eyes which one would you rather buy but there is the Jacob's ladder or short ribs so next, I want to concentrate on what is one of my favourite pieces, the brisket. Absolutely beloved of the barbecue fraternity, and rightly so. All I want to do then, quickly, is to take this inside skirt out. A great piece of meat on its own. Just quickly nip it out. Trim off any undesirable bits, so very quickly. Can be quite tough that bit there. And then all we need to do is just start it off. And then we can peel the skin away, just like that. Trim it up, maybe take a bit of the fat off. And there you have a great piece of meat to put straight on the grill. Beautiful. So on to the brisket itself. What we need to do then is just to quickly nip the bone out. Just gonna square off the end. And then basically, I'm just gonna loosen around the outside of the bone very quickly. And then we're going to stand it up and then we're just going to run our knife close up to the ribs and go all the way along and release it from the meat. So I'm just going to trim that up then I will go in between these bones very quickly just to get any usable trim. It's all good meat. So we've got our brisket. We've got our point end and our navel end. So what I want to do, straight through. Traditionally, we would roll this all together. 
but I'm just going to trim off any of the excess fat, skimming it out, trimming it up. So next it's on to the prime piece of brisket. Always squaring it off, skimming out this fat. So as you can see this end is looking a bit raggedy so I know it's a bit of the cream. I'm just going to trim it off, go into mince. I will take just a little bit more fat off here. Not too much and that is ready for rolling on the barbecue, in the smoker, as it is, or we'll just put a few strings round each of those. So very quickly then, I've tied both of those. There's the brisket, the point end, the navel end. I've trimmed in between the bones, that's our pile of trim, those two inside skirts. Now I've very quickly tied these, so excuse the tie in, but there is pretty much our brisket done. And like I've said, I absolutely love this cut. And so do you guys who like to barbecue, grill, smoke. And to my friends at Country Wood Smoke UK, I should put a link down in the descriptions. How would you fancy that, my friends? Right. Brisket is done. So next up then, we're on to the chuck and the blade. Quite a decent hunk of meat, as you can see. So the chuck lays beneath the blade bone and obviously the blade on top will give us our chuck tender and our oyster blade where we can get our flat iron steaks from. So, what we need to do is I'm just going to quickly take that end bone out. Then I'm going to stand it up and same with the brisket. I'm going to go down the rib bones and then trace down these feather bones, sheet boning it out in one piece. And then again, we will trim the meat from in between the bones. Years ago we used to do these individually, but now it's so much quicker to sheep bone and then just trim your bones. That's my opinion anyway, and I am sticking to it. So, we will trim that up and that will go into our trim pile. Next, we will separate the chuck from the blade. Very simple. Tracing down the scapula. Then you will come to a natural seam, as you can see there. And that's how we separate the chuck from the blade. Now I like to take it all the way. There is our chuck. Just needs a bit of tidying up. So take off that end and trim it out. Then with our chuck, I actually like to take this piece off just to square it up a bit. That can go into dice or mince. Then we turn it over, we need to take out this paddy whack. The paddy whack is the muscle, I suppose, that allows or keeps the cow's head up. Tough is anything, but I know certain countries, they actually make something of that. Just look at that. It's like a stretch Armstrong taking any of that exposed meat off. I'm going to square it off. That can go kebabs, pies, dice, and then square the front half. 
And there you have your lovely chuck. You could tie it up, roast it, take some steaks off, braise it, some steaks you could put on the grill. But lovely, lovely steaks. That's our chuck. Now when I said you could put some of these on the grill, this end, obviously, the ribs of beef sit here, so your ribeye steak, so you could actually take a few of those off there, trim them down, and you'll have some lovely chuck eye steaks. Right, let's get on with that blade. So years ago, again, this would be boned out in one piece and cut for braising or rolled as a slow roasting joint. Just need to sharpen my knife. But like I was saying, trends change. People discover new cuts and these are one of the perfect examples of this. So I've just loosened each side of that scapula, that blade bone, and we're looking for the top of that blade bone. And we're just tracing either side of it. Very simple. And then just gently take off that oyster blade there, which we'll get our flat irons from. Give that a bit of a trim up in a minute. Take off that piece of meat there for dice. And then we just want to repeat with the opposite side, just finding the ridge of the scapula. Taking off the chuck tender, which is a very, very, very lean piece of meat. Used to be called the poor man's fillet. And I'll show you for why in a moment. Just taking it off there, ditching that fat. Knife under, just want to take that silver skin, gently skim it off. I'm going to square that up, go into dice. And as you can see, that chuck tender is a beautiful lean piece of meat. And why is it called the poor man's fillet? Because when it's cut, it looks rather a lot like fillet steak or tenderloin. Right, that's the chuck tender. So onto this oyster blade then, there is a big cartilage, sinew, whatever you want to call it, runs through the middle. But first thing I want to do is just take it off the fat. As you can see, just again, always like almost skimming the fat off. Quite a hefty piece of fat there. Again, render it down for dripping. Then I just want to trim that bit off. Again with my knife, taking the silver skin right underneath it. Just gonna square it. Again, take the silver skin from there. And then repeat with this side trimming any fat off. So like I was saying then, this would traditionally either be rolled or cut into blade steaks. Very, very popular again, slow roasted, but this is where your flat irons come from. And the thing is, is that big sinew that runs through the middle, as you can see, you've got to kind of float across the top of it, taking as much meat as you can, taking your time. The beauty of this though is it's quite tough, so the chances of you going through are quite slim, which is good. And then once we've got that off, Square in both ends, just a preliminary check over. If we've missed any bits, any fat, 
any silver skin and there two flat iron steaks again on the grill on the barbecue stunning so it's just a case of repeating with the other side then now if you're going to cut this in two there's a really really easy way of doing it I'm going to go through but not all the way through because there's silver skin and then just travel my blade over it as if you were fillet in a fish and take any excess off again always squaring up finessing it's what us butchers do you could take that off but that ain't gonna hurt you a little bit of fat won't hurt and then the same with this side grabbing it and then shaking the skin not the meat and you will again get it all off and there we have four flat irons so off that chuck and blade we have got our pile of trim our diced we got the chuck tender I've just cut them through so you can see what they're like keep that hole if you want to those beautiful beautiful flat iron steaks and of course our chuck you can roast it roll it braise it take it off that end grill it and that is our chuck and blade done so very quickly I just want to deal with this shin so like I said there's part of it missing so it would be about that long so what we would do one of the first things I learned to bone out these they're so easy and I know that sounds silly to you lot out there because it must all look hard but this was simple to do and because it's been a bit what's the word I'm looking for unloved we'll say I'm just going to take off what I can and that will go to dice beef and minced beef so next I want to concentrate on this LMC this is what we call in the UK LMC stands for leg of mutton cut also known as a bowler blade again some great steaks off this all we're doing as per usual is just taking off trimming it up any desirable bits now I like to take this muscle half half this muscle off here and use that again diced kebabs and then just going to take this silver skin off the top by getting our knife in doing it a little bit at a time so you get your knife right under as you can see you can see the knife through it and then just angling the blade up as you can see it traveling along the top that gives you nice clean surface and again here and then just check it maybe take a bit of that excess fat off there and then we can get some beautiful steaks off this by all means you could actually tie this up if you wanted to and slow roast it but I prefer to stake it into these beautiful steaks now we're cutting this across the grain which tightens up the fibers makes it more tender take one more off and the rest we can put into our diced beef I think I'll put that one in as well keep them nice and clean so out of that LMC then or bowler we've got a little bit of diced a little bit of trim and six beautiful steaks so on to the star of the show 
the four ribs. Now several things we can do with this. Uh, it's a shame I've only got one set to be honest with you because I'm half inclined to completely take it off the bone and do some ribeye steaks by removing this cap here, the top, the rib cap and obviously you're left with just that eye of the meat where your ribeye steaks come from. But also makes fantastic ribs of beef on the bone. So a great British beef roasting joint and also coat the buffs. So what to do, what to do. What I am gonna do then, I suppose I'm gonna keep it traditional. I'm just gonna nip out the tip of this blade bone here. Now these ribs, or let me say this forequarter was cut quite short. So it should have had another rib on the end here and that would have been our four ribs but like this was cut short so we've gone a bit long to get as many ribs out of it as possible. So what I'm gonna do then is very traditional. I'm just going to do a two rib roast on the bone. So through, get my saw. You can take out that continuation of the paddywhack if you want by just nipping along it. Same principle as the chuck. And there you have a classic British rib of beef on the bone. Now you can do what we call chine it, which is to saw through these bones, and that is just allowing the ease of carving because you stand it up, you can pull that bone off and bone that bit out pretty much when it's cooked, pull it out, and then you can obviously carve it. But there is a double rib roast on the bone. Beautiful. Right, with these remaining two, I'm gonna knock up a couple of coat the buffs, one of my favorites. So again, in half, straight through. Don't they look good? So for a coat the buff, I'm going to just saw the backbone off. So through, changes pitch, you'll hear it once the bone stops and then quickly just nip that bone out taking in the paddy whack I mean that is also a good way of presenting a rib of beef with the backbone out just like that so I'll repeat with the other side then both sides just taking following the natural seam, that cap off. Now that is begging to be cooked on the grill. Just simply cut it in half and just lay it on. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So repeat with the other side and through. Now the reason I say put that on the grill is you could dice that but it's such a waste of a beautiful tasting cut of meat. Just fold them maybe, put a toothpick through them, get them on a hot grill very quick, very very quick. Now just left to take some of this fat off and just quickly French trim these ribs very quickly for you for the video because this is going to go on forever else. Same with the other. So there's our ribs of beef then. Just to reiterate, a double rib of beef on the bone, couldn't get more English. A couple of beautiful coat de buffs. Like I said, that rib cap can be diced or minced, but I think that needs to go on a grill. It's a beautiful flavour, absolutely fantastic, and a little bit of trim. And that's the four ribs, done. Okay then, so we're on to the final primal. The final primal, what a great name for a metal band. The neck of beef. 
Now, I've been doing this 30 years and I still can't stand doing these necks of beef. It's such a complex primal with all these neck vertebrae. Six bones in there, none of them are the same shape. They change shape as they go through the carcass. And you were always judged how good a butcher you were on how clean your bones were when they came off. But they got some really funny shapes here. I mean, basically, at the end of the day, it's going to stew, it's going to mince, so you've just got to do as good as you can. So I'm going to do this pretty quick by loosening round all these bones, just riding my knife round. And then this first bone here, where the neck attaches to the head, is the easiest one. Now your knife is going in, it's scooping out. Just take that first one off. It's the easiest. Just give you a rough idea of how funky that shape is. So next we are going to ride round this side. To loosen it off. and then just start riding over the top of the bones. So when I was training then, you had to take them out individually. And of course you were judged on how clean they came out. So you go through each one. But what I want to do, I just want to get the bone out. So I'm going to do it the quick way and pretty much Take it out in one. It's more of a meat processing way of doing it quickly. And what I will do, I will separate the bones after for you and you can actually see what I mean of all the different shapes, sizes and all the directions they go in. So. Just riding in and out of that bone. If you can see my hand working backwards and forwards. It's all about trying to leave as much meat on as you can. And there we have it. That is our neck boned out. Just take any undesirable bits off. Any blood meat. And that purely would be minced or you could get some nice bits of dice out of. Just going round it, trimming it up, any of the dry meat. That goes there. And then this, like I said, into mince, into dice. But I'll just cut into it just to show you what it looks like. So this neck bone then, I've took it off the quick way, but I just want to show you the shape of some of these bones. We used to take them out individual. You can trim them up when you've got them off like this. You know, your knife has got to travel around all these contours, as you can see, all different ways, all different sizes, all different shapes. So I'm going to tidy this up and we're going to put it all together and we can have a good look at what we got off this fantastic four quarter. Mince and dice. Well, my dear friends, there is that four quarter all done. Now, if you remember that whole four quarter, it weighed 52.5 kilos. Now we've totally boned it out, trimmed it out. I weighed the bones, they weighed eight kilos. Of course, they won't go to waste stock pets. I also weighed the fat, that was eight kilos. That just needs to be minced, rendered down for dripping. No waste there. And then we are left with this beautiful selection of meat, as you can see. Now, the thing with the four quarter is it's normally dice and mince. All your money is in the hind quarter, all your steaks, all your top grade roasting joints. So you need to be a bit creative on your four quarter. But what we've got here is a beautiful tub of trim ready for mince, you know, lasagnas, 
ragouts, whatever you want to do with that mince. So many possibilities, meatballs, burgers, sausage. Then we've got this lovely tub of diced kebabs, casseroles, stews. Then over to these, my favorite, the briskets. Then the short ribs, the half ones, the long ones, and of course, the beef lollipops. Beautiful, I love them like that. We've got that rib cap, which I'm gonna treat myself to as soon as I get off here. Get them in the pan. Four beautiful flat irons. Those lovely inside skirts off the brisket. Of course, the chuck, which I've just staked a few, go all the way through them. We've got that lovely, couldn't get more British if you tried, double rib roast on the bone. A couple of coat de buffs, and then those lovely LMC or Bowler Blade steaks. And that, my friends, is it. How to butcher a four quarter. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, please click subscribe where my face comes up down there. Remember there's part one to watch, click. You'll be able to find it on there. Also find me on my social medias, Facebook, Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project, and on my Twitter at the Scott Ree Project. So until next time, I'm gonna get these cheeky little bleeders into a pan, because I think I deserves me some meat. Take care, all the best. Thanks for watching.